Loving greetings to dear brothers and sisters who are hearing me from around the world, from different countries. It's a joy to meet you once again. We started yesterday on the topic of biblical prophecies to find out whether we are near to the rapture, to find out whether, whether we are living in this end time. We started to look into the prophetical words and uh, I will continue from the topic we have uh, stopped yesterday. The last verse we read and stopped to us uh, that uh, mankind is divided into three groups. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verses 32. Give no offense either to the Jew or to the Greek or to the church of God. We saw what are the difference between these groups. In the Old Testament time after separating Abraham and their descendants, there was only two groups known as uh, Jews and the Gentiles. Those who are not Jews, they were known as Gentiles. After the day of Pentecost, in other words, after the death and resurrection of the Lord, God entered into a program when he cast out the Jewish people. We read in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15, casting of them, that is the Jewish people, casting of them has brought reconciliation to the world. In other words, the Christ came into the midst of these people, Jewish people, but they rejected and they crucified him. So because of uh, that, the Lord has rejected them, casting of them. You know, God has separated them uh, for a while without dealing with them. Uh, they, God has casted them out so that it brought reconciliation to the world. God started a new program known as the Church of God. And we saw yesterday in the Church of God, those who are born again from Jews and Gentiles, they are composed in the, in the, in the Church of God. Those are the members of the Church of God. Anyone, uh, irrespective of the creed or caste, those who are born again, they will be the members of the Church of God. So Church of God program started on the day of Pentecost and it will be over by rapture. By rapture. When Christ is going to come down from heaven to meet his people in the midair. As we saw yesterday, uh, the dead in Christ will rise first and uh, uh, those who are alive will be changed. And together with them, we will be taken up to meet the Lord in the midair which is known as the rapture. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the middle. Now, as we saw, there are three groups. Once the, once the church is taken up by rapture, there will remain only two more groups, just it was in the Old Testament days, Jews and Gentiles. But when you read the scripture, and when you see this God's program and dealing, there is a question that comes to our mind. Why God has a favoritism to this Jewish people? From around the world, people have asked me, why does God has a favoritism to these people only? You know, when you read the scriptures, many a time, salvation, first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. See, on the day of Pentecost, it was mostly the Jewish people who were saved. You know, later on, it took eight years after that first Gentile convert from in the house of Cornelius, they have come and joined into the church. So first to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Even at the time of judgment, uh, you read in uh, Romans chapter 2 and verses uh, 9, um, because first to the Jews and also to the Greeks. The judgment also will come first to the Jews. What I want to point out to you is, does God have a favoritism with this paper? As many of us, why does God show a special, you know, dealing with these people only? We have to find out the answer from the scripture for this. So I'm going to take this class to show you that these people are a special people before God. 
and uh, how God is going to deal with them even in the future. In order to understand that, in order to understand the God's program, we need to understand the speciality of the Jewish people. In the world, they are a special people. But how did this nation came into existence? Where did their, you know, a history started? You know, you may be familiar, but some may not be familiar because I am speaking to people in different, uh, you know, countries of different spiritual state. I don't know everyone, but I just wanted to uh, uh, speak as if I'm teaching a person who doesn't know these basic things. From where does this Jewish history start? Let me remind you as a general term, if you open the Bible, it took only 11 chapters to write down, you know, creation, fall, um, you know, this uh, deluge, um, Noah's days, you know, all these things. God took only 11 chapters. From chapter 12, you find God is calling a person known as Abraham. And from him, the history starts. I want to tell you, dear ones, within 11 chapters, God has condensed the creation fall, you know, etc. The promises and uh, the history of uh, uh, Noah's flood, etc. 11 chapters. Then from chapter 12 of Genesis till end of the Bible, it is actually the history written to them and their history. It is the history of Jewish people. You know, look at that. You know, it took only 11 chapters to write down all this history till flood. Then from chapter 12, God is speaking about this nation. So it is very important. Another thing I was thinking, you know, if you take Bible geography, the background where these things have happened, the drama where it took place, the history that you find in the scripture is actually, the geography of Bible is actually Israel. Israel and the surrounding nations. So, it's very important to find out the, 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 the speciality of these people before God. Why God is showing a special kindness and consideration to this, this people. In order to understand that, we need to go back to history a little bit. I will slowly uh, start to show you how mankind was created and how he has gone away from God. We need to understand that in order to understand the history of Jews. When you come to chapter 1 of Genesis and verses 26, we read that... Um, we have been created in the image of God. I don't want to explain that. You know, the only creation in the world, in the image of God is mankind. We are created in the image of God. Uh, what does it mean? We have, a, 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 we have a soul or a spirit inside us. You know, look at the animal. They have a body and they have a soul. But look at man. He has something more. He not only he has a body, inside the body there is a soul. Along with that soul, you find in the scripture that he has a spirit. And man is the only created being with the spirit of God inside him. We will read a chapter 2. Chapter 2 of Genesis, how he was created. And verses 26. In chapter, sorry, uh, Genesis chapter um, 2 and verses 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed a man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living being. Some of the translation, eh? when God breathed into the nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. I was reading a historical book uh, written by a Jewish historian. You know, he wrote in that book, that word, living soul, when God breathed into his nostrils, man became a living soul, can be translated to, to man became a speaking soul. Man became a speaking soul. Yes, of course, it is right. Man is able to speak one another. He can speak with his creator, God, and uh, he has a capacity to speak. If he has to speak, if I have to speak, I need a mind inside. I need a spirit inside. We are going to look into the scriptures. Man is the only created being who has soul and spirit. 
animals have soul and body, but we have not only the body, inside the body we have soul and spirit. We are known as tripatriate nature. God, we know, is a triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just like that, that image is reflecting in us when God created us in tripartite nature. We have three nature. I just wanted to prove to you from one verse. You know, many think that we have only soul, but I want to take you from the scriptures. We not only have a soul, we have a spirit inside us, which is known as the breath of breath of the Almighty God. When you come to First Thessalonians chapter five, First Thessalonians and chapter five, First Thessalonians chapter five and verses twenty-three. Now, may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that. Eh? Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Dear brothers and sisters, dear ones who are listening to me, many people only at the death bed, they will understand. They are more than, you know, the, the soul they have. Many think that uh, they are only a, a soulish, in other words, uh, a natural man who has only, yeah, you know, he lives for his uh, pleasure and he lives for the satisfaction of his soul. But he has a part, not as a spirit in, in him. And I want to tell you, animals have got soul, but man has soul and spirit. And... One more thing, let me remind you, this soul and spirit of man cannot be divided, even at the time of death. You can only descend between soul and spirit through the word of God. That's what you read in the book of Hebrews. Why does God is known as the father of spirit? When you open Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 9, God is called as the father of spirit. I will tell you the reason. When I was studying the prophecy of Sakuria, you know, some of the part of Sakuria, I was overtaken by this verse. God is introducing himself that in the end time he is going to make Jerusalem a problem for the world and the surrounding nations. As he is telling it, you know, there was no nation surrounding. There was no Islam, you know, in this world. There was no Muslim people. Islam was not created. It, it, uh, Islam came into existence something around AD 620 or 30. You know, before Islam came into this world, around 2400 years before, God penned down in, 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 uh, um, uh, in Sakuria. Islam, uh, 400 years before Christ. That means around 1000 years before Islam came into existence. God is telling, introducing himself before telling about the prophetical fulfillment in relation to Jerusalem. That introduction I want to take. The burden of the word of the Lord, Sakriya chapter 12 and verse 1. The burden of the word of the Lord uh, against Israel. Thus says the Lord who stretches out the heaven, lays the foundation of earth and forms the spirit of man within him. Have you noted it? God says he is the one who stretched the heavens. God says he is the one who created the earth, laid the foundation of the earth. You know it is not a small thing to, to stretch heavens and lay the foundation of the earth. And God says along with that, he is the one who created the spirit of man in himself. Every child is, when every child is born into this world, not only the father and mother is involved in creation of the child, God is also involved in the creation of the child. In the mother's womb, God gives the spirit into the child. That is the reason he is known as a father of spirit. Father of spirit. Now, let me remind you in the, from the scripture, what, does, what is the function of the spirit in man? I will read only two verses. In, by, by two verses, I will clarify what is the role of the spirit in man. We will first take the book of Job. We'll go to the book of Job, chapter 32 first. Job chapter 32. In Job chapter 32, 
We will read uh, verses 8. But there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Look at that verse. There is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. We know that the spirit came into man when God has breathed into the nostrils of man. So that is the reason it is told here, the breath of the Almighty. That gives him understanding. And that part is the spirit in man. And when you look into this English Bible, that spirit is actually small as S-P-I-R-I-T, spirit of man. Always for the spirit of man, when it is used in the scripture, it is written by small as. What is the reason? There is another spirit. Holy Spirit, third person of Trinity, whenever he is mentioned, that will be in capitalist. You note the difference in the Bible. Whenever God is speaking about the spirit of man, it is a small s. And whenever God speaks about the spirit, Holy Spirit, it is a capitalist. You want to see one example? We will come back to this verse. We, when you take 1 Corinthians chapter 2 in your Bible, when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, only one verse I will take so that you will be able to recognize it from the scripture, especially when you study about speaking in tongues and all. Um, if you take 1 Corinthians chapter 13, if you really analyze, you can understand it proper doctrine. There, keep it in mind. If it is spirit, people say it is a spirit. Look into the scripture, whether it is a small s or whether it is a capital S. If it is a capital S, it is a spirit of God. If it is a small S, it is a spirit of man. If when you come to first Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 11. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 11. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. You know? Look at here, it is mentioned, spirit of man, as small as is uh, used there, and the spirit of God, capital S, is used. I don't want to expound that, you know, part of the scripture. But what I want to point out to you is, the spirit of man is created by God. And we read in uh, Job chapter 32 and verse 8, that spirit in man, Gives him understanding. Gives him understanding. Dear ones, we are different from animals. They don't have any moral, you know, uh, restriction or anything. They don't see sister as sister, mother as mother. They don't have any moral restriction. But why does man has got, go to any part of the world. Man is, you know, he has a moral, he is a moral being and he has a moral standard. He knows when he does something right and something wrong. When you do something wrong, from his spirit he can feel, it is, I am doing wrong. Animal doesn't have. And the spirit in man, as we have read here, it gives him understanding. More than intellectual knowledge, more than your, you know, you know, knowledge that you are acquiring. Your soul can be fattened, but your spirit, the spirit part of your spirit, you, it has to be enlightened. That is the reason Jesus told, unless you are born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. Because when man has disobeyed God, something has happened to the spirit. We will, we will just look into it, you know, later on. One more verse I want to read from Proverbs. In order to understand uh, uh, the difference of the spirit in man and uh, the soul in animals. In Proverbs chapter 20 and verses 27. Proverbs 20 and 27. A man steps up, uh, 27, sorry. The spirit of man is the lamb of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Underline that verse. The spirit of man, again it is as small as there. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. There is a lamp inside me. The lamp of God. The lamp of God is lightened to search the things. 
in order to see the things very clearly. Here the scripture very clearly teaches, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Dear ones who are listening to me, the Lord has kept a lamp inside you, searching the inner depth of his heart. Even the intentions of your heart can be searched by the spirit, that is the lamp of God. That spirit gives you understanding. That is the reason you are different from uh, uh, animals. You are a moral being. The breath of the Almighty has given this understanding to us. And we, man was communing, you know, he had a communion with God through his spirit. A God who is a spirit. And God told him, and uh, uh, with a commandment, kept him into the Fertile Crescent, a place known as Fertile Crescent in the Middle East. You see there are uh, some major rivers, Euphrates and Tigris and the Nile. And if you look, that part is a green places and all other part. For example, Arabian Peninsula and all, look at the map, it is dry desert. There is a place known as, you know, Fertile Crescent area. Man was created with the spirit inside him and he was placed in this place. We call it uh, Garden of Eden. God gave him all the blessings and he gave him a commandment. He showed a tree and told him, don't eat the fruit of that tree. Man disobeyed. What happened? God already told him, the day you eat that fruit, you will die. The day you eat, you will die. Adam ate, Eve ate. Both of them ate, but they didn't die. But a death has taken place as the Lord has told. You know this tripartite nature of man. What happened to his spirit? His spirit became dead towards God. In the scripture, if you study the meaning of death, it is actually the separation. Physical death is actually the separation of the soul and spirit from man. Spiritual death is that you are separated from God. Because of man's disobedience, he was separated from God and the spirit inside the man became dead towards God. And that is the reason Jesus Christ told, unless you are born again, he spoke to Nicodemus who was a very religious, pious man, obeying all the Old Testament laws. He was a teacher of Pharisees. To him, Jesus told, unless you are born again, you won't see the kingdom of God. A question was arised. How can I be born again? How, can I enter into my mother's womb again and be born again? Then Jesus very clearly told, unless you are born again by the Spirit and by what? By the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. That is the meaning. You read in the scripture, the Word of God. Why we take all this effort to convey to you the Word of God? Why this is recorded and it is published to the people and uh, why we stand on the pulpit and preach the word of God? Because it is the word of God. We read in the book of Peter that we are begotten by the living word. The word of God. As a child is born in the womb of a mother, you know, you are born again into the family of God. When the word of God and the spirit of God works together in a particular time, when your heart is right to receive God's word. Brother and says, why do we preach this? Why do we take separate our time? Why, why do we take all this uh, effort to convey to you these truths? We are trying to convey to you because you need to hear the word of God. You need to understand. You need to open your own heart. Then the spirit of God will come into your heart. Man became dead because of his disobedience. And every child of God that is born in this world is born, you know, half dead. His spirit is dead towards God. For example, Father and mother are born again. They have a child. That child is not born into the family of God. That child has to be born again. There is a saying in English that God doesn't have grandchildren. God has got only children. 
You need, everyone need to be born into the family of God. But let us come back to the history of Adam and Eve and the first, you know, the generation who were living in this world. Since man's spirit was dead towards God, he became a soulish man. His emotions, you know, everything is in the soul. And whatever pleases him, and what, you know, as the days went on, I can read one or two verses to prove you what was happening in this world. As the days went on, chapter 6 of Genesis and verses 11. We read here, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Have you noted that? A time came in the world as the days went on. Those who are born into this world, their spirit is dead. You know, mighty makes the right. If you are strong, you are the one who is ruling. Mighty makes the right. We read here, as the days went on, the earth was filled with corruption and the earth was filled with violence. Imagine a world like that. We read peacefully because we have governments. We have police, we have army, we have people who uh, uh, keep, uh, uh, they will make people to obey the law of the government so we can live peacefully. But in those days, earth was getting filled with violence and corruption. Who can go out from homes? Which girl will be able to walk freely on the street? The earth was filled with violence and corruption. I will show you, you know, their mentality at that time. Look at chapter 4 of Genesis. Chapter 4 of Genesis. Verses 15. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. God told, if anyone kill Cain, God will take vengeance sevenfold. But you know, as the days went on, the seventh generation, the generation of Lamech in the line of Cain, you know, what did they say? You will be surprised to hear. Look at verse 24. They are telling, if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Have you noted that? God is telling, he will take vengeance sevenfold. But here man is telling, God takes only sevenfold of vengeance. We will take 77 fold. Can you imagine? What was the mentality of the people? The mighty made the rules. The poor and the drowned of them. They were suppressed under the hands of the mighty people. And the earth was getting filled with violence and corruption. God looked into this world and he knew the world cannot go forward. His eyes fell on one man, Noah. God decided to save that man and his family who were righteous before God. God asked them to make an ark and he saved those people and he wiped and cleansed this world through the flood. So the flood came. Another chapter begins. Through Noah and his families, his children, God started another generation. You know, uh, they, uh, they are the people who knew God personally because of this flood. And they knew the judgment of God. But I want to tell you, again you find the disobedience. As the days went on, as the generation developed, I will show you from one, one, one incident. Look at chapter 9 and verses 1. God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. Be fruitful, multiply and fill the world. But what does these people start to tell after some time? Look at chapter 11 of Genesis. Chapter 11 of Genesis and verses 4. And they said, Come up. Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven. Why the reason? Why they are building it? Lest, let us make a name for ourselves. Lest we be scattered abroad, abroad over the face of the whole world. They started to build 
you know they started to build a, 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 a city they started to build city and the reason is to, uh, told here that we should not be scattered in the world we will live, live together but what god plainly told them be fruitful multiply fill the world and uh, cities became the breeding place of all kinds of sin in those days and that this time disobedience of people again time came to wipe out the earth but god has already made a covenant with noah with mankind he has kept that you know rainbow as an arch uh, in the in the sky that he will not kill man like that white flag there came another time to wipe out the earth and clean but god didn't do that but i want to tell you his eyes fell on a man his eyes fell on a man he knew who will be faithful to him you know what is his name his name is abraham abraham when i was reading that uh, uh, hebrew uh, historical book written by a hebrew uh, in other words a jewish person he was writing in it the word hebrew means every you know Uh, it is concerning abraham and the man who stood alone on the other shore the man who stood alone on the other shore he was living in between two rivers you read it in uh, acts yes acts chapter 7 he was called acts chapter 7 verses 2 to 4 i am not reading it uh, abraham was called from the place known as mesopotamia you know what is the meaning of mesopotamia Mesopotamia means between two rivers. He was living between Euphrates and Tigris river. God's eyes fell on him. And he knew the character of Abraham. He was seeking to God. God appeared to him. Here starts another history. God appeared to him. When all of this have gone away from God from God when again the world became corrupt God chose one man and we are going to read from the scripture what is the reason he has chosen one man we will see the reason look at chapter 12 of Genesis a very important chapter we saw till chapter 11 it was a previous history of uh, creation fall no has flood etc but chapter 12 the history of abraham starts we are going to read verses 1 now the lord has said to abraham get out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that i will show you brothers sisters every single word is so important i will make you a great nation underline that word i will make you a great nation just one person god has appeared to him get out of your family get out of your country get out of your father's house <coughs> when we read it it may feel very simple but it is not simple especially in those days the patriarch you know culture was prevailed in those days every person wanted to die and be buried near their fathers or forefathers it is at that time god is telling this man get out of your father's house family get out of your family eh get out from your country you know what a total separation from his own country from his own father's family from his own family he has to be separated to god separated separation is always from and to separated from separated to abraham was separated from that country and the families to god and where did god ask him to go he never revealed to a land that i am going to show you he never knew where is he going but it was in the heart of god where is that land to a land that i am going to show you unless he obeys god he will not reach that land he has to be separated from his own country he has to separated from his father's family 
he has to get separated from his own family unless he gets separated from there and obey god he will not reach that land which was in the heart of god and why did god separate them like this god told them god promised him i will make you a great nation i am going to make you a great nation what is the reason god was making a nation from abraham out of all other nations in the world there were so many nations in this world how why why did in god choose one nation in this in this world and why did he create another nation out of him there was a reason this is what we have to find what is the speciality of the jewish people we will come to chapter 18 chapter 18 of genesis we will come back to this verse chapter 18 of genesis verse 17 onwards and the lord said shall i hide from abraham what i am doing since abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and at the nations and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him look at the next verse for i have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the lord to do righteousness and justice that the lord may bring to abraham what he has spoken to him god has specifying why he has separated abraham i want to bless him i want to bless his children i want to bring him to the land that i have promised i want to make him a great and a mighty nation in order in order to teach his children to keep the way of the lord to do righteousness and justice when righteousness and justice were nothing in this world taken out and man was doing all kind of things he wanted god has chosen abraham in order that he will teach his children righteousness as we have read here righteousness and justice okay we will come to that part but have you noted that I will make you a great and mighty nation. I will make you a great nation. Who is behind the history of this people? Who is behind this people, dear ones? I told you, Jewish people, the Israelite nation is not an ordinary country like other country. Behind their history, it is God. We know that they are, you know, Uh, 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 we know that uh, they are uh, so uh, uh, one of the powerful countries sixth nuclear power nation in the world a tiny country a country that is only 470 kilometers long and the widest part is only 135 kilometer widest part can you imagine a country like that 470 kilometer long and f- uh, you know widest part is only 135 kilometer just imagine compare it with your own country it is a tiny country at present they are surrounded by 23 plus 1 20 sorry 22 plus 1 uh, you know 22 arab you know Mus- you know islamic countries they all wanted to wipe out israel constant war is happening we were seeing the news and hearing the news just before a few days there was 4000 rockets that came from gaza against israel some rockets came from lebanon also from the northern part but how could this tiny country survive this you know uh, this uh, terrorist attack why other arab nations after they came in 1948 you know they came to war with israel together 1956 they came uh, to war with israel together 1967 they came to war with israel together 1973 they came to war with israel together then in 1982 they came for war then you find the constant war from gaza and lebanon and other places in judea why these arab people are keeping quiet they have more weapons and they have uh, more money they have you know uh, more than uh, uh, more than half of world oil with them till still why they are re- reluctant to attack israel i will make you not only great 
I will make you a mighty country. It's a promise of God. He is the one who is behind him. But he had a purpose in his heart. He had a purpose. The purpose is that he should teach his children righteousness and justice. And through them, the world should understand what is God's righteousness and what is God's justice. I'm going to read one or two verses more in order to make it very clear. Genesis chapter 18, which we read. There you find one interesting verse. Genesis chapter 18 and verses 19. For I have known him. I have known him in order. He had a personal knowledge of this man. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. And verses 6 to 8. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verses 6 to 8. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the people of the face of the earth. Dear ones, please underline that verse. God is telling. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were the least of all people. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he sowed to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out of a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of bondage, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. But have you noted that verse 6? You are a holy people to the Lord. The Lord your God has chosen you to become a people for himself. A special treasure above all the people on the face of the earth. You have been chosen to be a special treasure above all other nations. Bible clearly teaches they are specially chosen by God. They are specially chosen by God. Do you want to know what is the reason? As we have read here, a special treasure above all of the nations. First, they have to teach their children righteousness and uh, justice. When I, we come to Isaiah's prophecy, after many, many years after this, when they have gone away from God, God is speaking to them through the prophet Isaiah. We will read uh, two passages, one from Isaiah chapter 43. Very important to understand this. Isaiah 43 verses 10. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. <laughs> Underline that. You are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he, before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. Look at chapter 44 also, and look at verses 8. Do not fear, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from the time I declare it, you are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. In two passages in Isaiah we read, you are my witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is a person who has first-hand information. A, a witness is a person who has first-hand information. Either he must see it or he must have heard it. Those are the people who come to the court to give witnesses. The Jesus Christ has chosen us who are saved to be his witnesses. God has chosen Abraham and his descendants as a nation. He has chosen them to be his witnesses. Oh, what a wonder it is. You are a special chosen people. You are a treasure above all other people. So this nation is a special nation above all other people. I don't want to take all the speciality now. I will take it later on if God willing. I am so fascinated with the history of these people. I have been looking into their history more than 40, 45 years. 
I have traveled in this country more than 10 times, around 10 or more than 10. So that country has become very familiar with me. God took me there in order to see it, in order to understand more closely, in order to teach people and, uh, you know, make people understand about it. That is the reason I'm speaking like this. I will keep on teaching about these people from the word of God. God has chosen them as a witness in the Old Testament days. He had a great desire in his heart. That desire you will find in Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Dear ones, listen to the word the Lord is speaking. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and holy nation. God wanted these people to be completely, you know, priests who serve him. A priest is a person who stands between man and God. I wanted you to be a holy, you know, priesthood, whole, a kingdom of priesthood and a holy nation. What a wonderful desire it is. Why didn't these people understand this properly? They became so blind to God's truth. These people known as Israelites. They had such a privilege. As a nation, God wanted them all to be a kingdom of priests. The people who stand between God and man, who pray for man, who is standing between God and man. What a privilege it is. And to be a holy nation. Since he is so holy, he wanted a holy people. Then only he can commune with them. But they failed. We will see if later on. Because of their utter failure, what all atrocities happened to them, what tragedy they have gone through, and what is their history, the history of Jewish people are because of their failure. Otherwise, this world would have been so good because they would have been priesthood uh, who will teach righteousness and justice of God in this world. But uh, as you come to Isaiah chapter 5, prophet telling, you know, unrighteousness even among their people. Injustice even among their people. You know, they were crying. And the woman, the wife, they were crying at the altar. Man has gone away. Totally, these Jewish people have gone away from God. How can he use them as witnesses for him? And that is the reason. They were set aside. And another people from Gentiles was chosen. That is church. And Jesus told them, you are my witnesses. Brothers and sisters, you and me have been chosen by God, a holy people. And uh, we are a royal priesthood. And we are his witnesses. In the place they have failed, God has chosen us and made us as witnesses and priesthood for him. But one day God is going to uh, 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 take back this people because God's purpose cannot be uh, withheld and uh, it, can't, it cannot be annulled. Now, one more thing, let me tell, uh, remind you. One more thing. We read in Genesis chapter 12. I told you every verse, there is a meaning in it. God says in verse 1, go to a land. Eh? Separate from your father's house, from your, you know, country, from your father's, you from your own family and go to a land that I'm going to show you. God didn't tell him if someone, you know, God, you know, God is prompting us to go to a, some country which we don't know, we will be hesitant. But he started to walk. He started to walk believing God that there is a land that is told to me by this almighty God. Go to a land where I'm going to show you. He never showed which is that land. But I want to tell you about this land. You take a globe or you take a world map and look and see what the Bible says. I will read to you. 
I want to read to you two, two, three verses because it is so important. When you come to Ezekiel chapter 5, I will read two verses from Ezekiel and one verse from Isaiah. Ezekiel chapter 5 and we will read verses 5. Thus says the Lord God, this is Jerusalem. I have set her in the midst of the nations and the countries all around her. Have you noted it? Jerusalem is in the midst of the world. <coughs> in other words, Jewish country, Israel, you know, the nation known as Israel is the center of the world. I will tell you why this land was given to them. We will read another passage in chapter 38. God is revealing us when Russia and its allies is going to attack Israel, chapter 38 and 39. Chapter 38 of uh, Ezekiel and verses 12. To take plunder and to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and again a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods, who dwell in the midst of the land, who lives in the midst of the world, countries. What about uh, millennium? When Christ is going to come back, there will be a lot of topographic changes and nations changes. When Christ is going to come back, where will be Israelites left? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19. Yes. Isaiah chapter 19 and verses 24. 24. In that day Israel will be one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land. In the millennium, that is Christ ruling here for thousand years, at that time also Israel will be in the middle of the land. Let me tell you, dear ones, they are a special people chosen with a special purpose by God. It was in the heart of God that Abraham and his descendants should dwell there. And we saw from the Bible, it is the center of the world. Why did God bring their, them into the center of the world? They are a witness. You have a room here. Not the electrical light. In the olden days, you have a room. And you have lighted a lamp. Where will you keep that lamp? In the corner of the, world, in the room? No, you will keep it in the middle of the room so that Every part of the room will have that light. It's the same thing. You are my witness. You are my servant. God took them from, uh, you, know, Calde you know, from the land of uh, Mesopotamia. That is the river which is running through Euphrates, uh, sorry, between these two rivers, Euphrates and Tigris, which is probably in, a, uh, sorry, Iraq. Present Iran. From there, the Lord has brought him to a place which is the middle of the uh, uh, countries so that he and his children will live there, obey God's word, eh? and teach us themselves and others about righteousness and justice of God, about one God. Why did God give them such center part of the world so that the light will shine to the four corners of the world? Light will shine to the four corners of the world from the center of the world. God will bless these people and the surrounding nations, you know, nations upon nations, all the globe, you know, around the world, people will come to understand about this one God. But they have utterly failed. What I understand, God was not able to bless them. <coughs> there was a time in... A time of Solomon, God blessed them. And you find in the Bible, at that time, they lived peacefully without war. And even, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the messages of their God have gone to the farthest end of the world. From where did Queen Sheba has come? According to the word of Christ, she has come from the farthest place of the world. How did she come from there? She heard about Solomon and his God. 
she wanted to see herself and understand whether it is true or not she came from the farthest end of the world because the light has gone from there till that place i believe queen sheba has come from yemen present yemen yemen and ethiopia probably they were together if you take a map and look you can understand i have gone and visited uh, you know this uh, place uh, where they used to tell that it was uh, uh, queen sheba's uh, um, uh, you know uh, ruins of the palaces and now when i visited later on after many years they to they say and no it is not uh, the, the 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 ruins of palace of uh, um, sheba queen sheba it it was a, a go down of uh, things that was brought from uh, india and other places they kept those in this uh, store room and it was supplied from there to other part of the you know middle east but yemenis they are known as the people of sheba we read in the bible that uh, people from sheba they came and caught uh, uh, job's uh, animals and all and job i believe lived in nearby nearby yemen is another place known as salala i have visited i have seen uh, the the the, uh, the the cave they say where uh, job was sitting to scratch his uh, you know boils and i have seen where uh, they say it is the place where job is buried anyhow i believe he lived in uh, in salala which is a part of uh, uh, a country known as sultanate of oman which is you know one part of that land is adjacent to yemen so yemen is this uh, shebai people came and caught hold of uh, um, uh, uh, job's uh, animals anyhow let us leave that is another story and the story what i want to tell you is at the time of solomon this message of one god went throughout the world through the merchants and other people they conveyed it and went to the furthest end of the world till yemen and from there as she a lady queen she marched all the desert area came to you know israel to find you know whether it is true with solomon this is a chatly god wonder but they failed they failed but what i want to point out to dear ones god told you are my witnesses god wanted them to be his witnesses a, a shining lamp that is the reason he was trying to clean the wick of the lamp he sent the prophets to cut down that uh, wick and to get it more lighter but these people were going away from god day by day debody it's a long story but what i want to tell you is this land is the center of the world surrounded by 22 islamic countries with the purpose of god god wanted abraham and his descendants to live there as a witness in the middle of the world as a witness to teach the world about god's righteousness and justice since they failed god entered into another program known as a church program and through the church he has made us his priest we are known in the letter of peter as royal priesthood and we have been made as a witness for the lord you are my witnesses and we are his witnesses and we are his priesthood living in many parts of the world scattered in the world at this time god is not dealing with the people of israel why god is not dealing with his people god has cast them out god has cast them out you know their land was such a fertile land such a fertile land i just wanted to read one verse from deuteronomy chapter 11 this land that has given to these people chapter 11 or 11 of deuteronomy verses 11 onwards but the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valley which drinks water from the rain of heaven 
a land for which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are always on it. From the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season. Keep it in mind, I just want to speak something about that. The early rain and the later rain that you may gather in your grains and your wine and your oil. And I will send grass in your field for your livestock that you may eat and be filled. Take it to yourself, lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship him, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you and he shut up heaven so that there will be no rain and the land yield no produce, no produce. And you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Dear brothers and sisters, dear ones who are listening to me, in this passage we read, it is a good land. God is telling it is a good land, a land of hills and valleys. I told you I have traveled there. When you step into the land of Israel, you can find out. It is as different from all other countries. You will find the speciality of that land. And uh, God uh, told, former rain and later rain, he is giving them. And uh, they have to keep the rain. Sorry, they have to obey his commandment. Then God will give uh, 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 this uh, rain in its proper time. So there will be enough grass and enough fruits for them to eat and their livestock. If they don't obey, God told, I will stop the rain. If you go after other gods, I will stop the rain. It is a good land. When I was reading this verse 11, God is specifying about the beauty of the country to a land of hills and valley which drinks water from the rain of heaven. You know that I lived in the Middle East for 18 years. I lived in a country known as uh, Oman, Sultanate of Oman. I lived and walked there for 17 years. I have traveled to many Arab countries. They are in Arabian Peninsula. A land that is very dry. I had my own experiences there. You know, very seldom rain comes there. Once I was caught in a rain, I went to take a Bible class in a, in a camp where laborers were living. Usually in those days when I was working there, I used to take Bible classes in the labor camp where laborers, they will come uh, uh, after their day's work. After their food and they will be in the camp. I used to go there and take a, gather these people and used to take classes there. One day after the class, it was night. I drove my car and I was coming back. Immediately the rain came. Then within a, you know, a split of a second, within a few minutes, I saw the roads flooding. I was not able to drive my car. I have to park my car in one side of the road and I saw a big truck parked there. I, I jumped over the truck in order to be safe because I thought uh, uh, the, 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 there was a wall nearby. It may fall and my car may be taken by this flood. So I climbed up this big truck and stood there in order to be, uh, uh, be safe. And the water was flowing like a river on the tarmac road. That taught me a lesson. You know why? What is the reason? When the rain falls there, the land will not drink the water. The land will not drink the water. Most of the places are rocky places and, and the, the land is so hard that the water will not enter. Only on the surface the water will be there. The rest of the water will come to the valley and they will make the uh, river like I saw through the roads. It's very, very dangerous that time. I was able to reach my home only very, very late. And they were searching me around. And uh, I don't want to tell the story. But uh, at last, uh, I somewhere or other left my car there. And uh, I uh, came back to my home through somebody helped me. But you know, 
I am living in a state known as Kerala. You take a map and look, southern pole, southernmost uh, state of India. We are on the coastal area. Almost six months of rain we have. My land is known as, my state is known as God's own country. Do you know why? Every part of it is green. There is no dry land. My land is with hills and valleys and rivers and ponds. It's a special place. The reason is we get rain more than other places. And the interesting thing is, this rain when it comes, the land will drink the water. The land will drink the water. The water level in the soil will go high. There is a reason you find it is green around Kerala. Kerala is very, very beautiful. Especially I'm living in Cochin. You come here, backwaters and uh, lagoons, and you will see one of the most beautiful land in the world here where I'm living. It's so beautiful and people call it God's own country because it is so green. And let me tell you, God didn't tell that my land is good land. He didn't tell. But he told about Israel, it is a good land. The reason I tell you, eyes of the Lord was always there. We read uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verses 9, his eyes are running to and forth in this world to show himself, you know, uh, 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 to, to show forth his uh, greatness through somebody who is loyal to him. That's what you read in 2 Chronicles 16 and verses 9. His, his eyes are running to and fro in this world. But here you read in verses 13, uh, sorry, uh, the, the eyes of the Lord, um, we read in verses 12, the eyes of the Lord your God are always on it from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. Constantly is watching. Did God see the Gaza rockets falling in Israel? Yes, he saw it. Does he see the people are attacking these people? Yes, he has seen it. Does he see the suffering of the Jewish people? Yes, he has seen it. His eyes are always there, from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. And he called this land as a good land. It's a good land. We will come to this verse, but uh, uh, this passage, but I just want to tell something more about this uh, land. Uh, when you come to chapter 8, look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 7, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and water and fountains and springs and flow out of valley and hills. Now look at verse 8, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey. Can you count how many, you know, fruits God is selling here? I will count for you. A land of wheat, barley, then of wines, Figs, pomegranates, olive and honey, seven kind of fruits which man can eat. Seven is the fullness of God's number. Seven is the fullness of God's number. Can you imagine these fruits are grown in Israel? Yes, even still now if you go you can see this. This time when I went, you know one Jewish uh, a lady who was selling this pomegranate juice, she took a big pomegranate and showed me this is the king of the fruit. And she told me the reason. Look at this pomegranate, she told. There is a crown above it. You know, if you take a pomegranate, there is a crown on its top. So she told this is the king of the fruit. And the land of Israel is plenty of this fruit. For their cattle, and for their, you know, livelihood, this kind of fruits is plenty there. They call it land of milk and honey. A land of milk and honey. A land where God has blessed. But God gave them a warning. If you don't obey me. If you don't obey me. I will stop the rain. I just want to point out to you something more in relation to this rain. I want to tell you, God 
separated Israelites from other nations. That's what we were meditating. We will come to that rain part. And there was a question raised. Paul is asking, what is advent of being a Jew? I didn't answer that. Turn to Romans chapter 3. We will quickly go through the and We will try to stop this class. Romans chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. What advantage has the Jew? What is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. Brothers and sisters, who wrote this Bible? Who wrote this Bible? You have a Bible in your hand, but who wrote it? Paul told, chiefly, the oracles of God is handed to them. God chose them to write it. We will turn to another passage in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 onwards. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 5 onwards. Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as the Lord God commanded me that you should be act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, uh, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. Uh, in the sight of the people who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has God so near to it and as the Lord God is uh, uh, to us and whatever reasons we may call upon him and what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteousness, judgments, as are in all this law which I set before you this day. The statutes and commandments of God was given to these people. As Paul has said here, one of the advantage of you, the oracles of God was given to them. Dear ones, they were chosen to be the writers and preservators and they were chosen to propagate or to spread this word. Let me remind you, 66 books in this Bible, 39 books in the Old Testament, all 39 books were spent down by Jewish people. Take the New Testament, all the New Testament book was written by Jewish people except Luke. And Luke, I believe he was a proselyte who came to the Jewish faith. Otherwise, yes, it is true Jewish faith. That is faith in Jesus Christ. What I want to tell you is mainly the writers of Bible. They were the people in other wise. These Jewish people are the one who have given us the Bible. Another thing. Look at chapter 6 and verses 4 of Deuteronomy. It is open before us. Chapter 6 and verses 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is one. You know, this is the prayer every devout Jew does it in the morning and in the night. Eh? This is a part of their prayer. And that prayer is known as Shema. S-H-E-M-A, Shema. Shema means hear. Hear, O Israel. Sorry to tell. Today, we hear this kind of prayer from every mosque around the world. The Lord, eh? Allahu Akbar. Allah is only God. This is what they are telling. Even before they started to pray, almost 3,500 years before, from, you know, 3,000 years before, or 2,000 years before Christ, they started to pray, Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is one. Monotheism. In other words, when people went after idol worship, they started to teach about one God. Our God is one. Monotheism. They taught about one God. They wrote down the scriptures. And they are the one who gave us uh, uh, the, 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 the scriptures, the Bible. 
The third reason, one of the great reason, you take book of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter one. It begins with the genealogy of uh, uh, genealogy of uh, Jesus Christ, but we will read uh, Matthew chapter one and one. Matthew chapter 1 and 1, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. What I want to point out to you, the genealogy of Jesus Christ starts from David and Abraham. What I want to tell you is, God has created this nation so that Jesus Christ could come through this nation. You know, go to Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. Unto us a son is given. Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us, as plural, and that nation is telling, unto us a son is given. Take Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. You know, Romans chapter 9, 10 and 11 is about the Jewish people. Romans chapter 9, 10 and 11. When you come to chapter 9 and verses 5, Paul is telling, Of whom are the fathers and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came? Christ came from them according to the flesh. He was born through them. We read again in Revelation chapter 12 verses 4 and 5. She gave birth to a male child who has ruled the whole world. That is Jesus Christ. They were the people who taught the world about one God. They are the one who gave us this Bible because they were the writers and preservatives and they were the one who were propagating the scriptures around the globe. Third, they were separated in order to produce Mashiach. Jesus Christ came through them. One more thing I want to tell you. We saw, we studied that God chose them in order to teach righteousness and justice. In other words, in the election of Israel, God wanted the world to be saved from the moral putrefaction. And we read in John's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 22, when Christ was speaking to the Samaritan woman, salvation is of the Jews. Let me stop here. They are a special people. They are chosen with a special purpose. And the next class, we are going to see about how the land was turned into desert and why did God bring them back? And we are going to see the eternal covenant made with them and uh, the land. Thank you very much, dear ones. Is it not interesting to study about this story of Israel? and the purpose by which God has chosen them. They have utterly failed in their place. God has chosen you and me, the church, to be his witnesses. We need to be his true witnesses. Convey the truth to others. And I want to stop by telling one thing. I have visited Mount Sinai also, where God gave uh, this law, Ten Commandments to the Jewish people. It is a very barren place, a rocky place. I have gone to the foot of that Mount Sinai. When I go there, I am overwhelmed. These people lived there for one year under the foot of Sinai. But one thing I want to tell you, the old people, one nation, born from the womb of Egypt, I used to tell like this, Egypt is a womb. 70 people went into Egypt at the time of uh, Joseph. Jacob and his family went there, 70 people. And when they came out, men alone, 600,000 men. I used to tell, Egypt is a womb why which the nation of Israel was born. They came out as a nation. When they came out, they came up into the place in Egypt itself at the foot of Sinai and God from heaven came down to meet them. Oh, is it a wonder? It is a wonder. Is it not a wonder that God from heaven came down to meet these nations at the foot of Sinai? 
is a renovation whom god has appeared as a, 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 a nation no not a single nation god has appeared to individuals of course but god did in appear to any other nation except the jewish people they have seen his glory on the mount of sinai it was very difficult for them to you know catch hold on to that vision that was given there Brothers, we were the people who never had any connection with this commonwealth of Israel. We were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. We were people without hope. But what a wonder that the Lord has chosen us by his grace in the place where these people have failed and made us as witnesses and kept us in different parts of the world so that we will be faithful witness to him. May the Lord bless you all. May the Lord help you to understand these truths and God's program. And uh, let us think as the Lord has taught about these people. May the good Lord bless you all, be with you, and use you as a, as a true witnesses for him in the coming days. Amen. Thank you.